Ableton Live 12 introduces a new feature called Scale Awareness, which allows us to work with most of the MIDI effects, the new meld synthesizer, and the MIDI generate and transform tools while sticking to a set scale or key on a clip by clip basis. For example, here I have a clip playing a sequence of consistent eighth notes on the note C3 running into a synthesizer sound. If I engage the random MIDI effect on here, and let's also engage this second MIDI monitor, we can see that it just basically randomizes these notes. However, if I engage the use current scale option at the top of the random MIDI effect, these random notes will now be locked to the scale set by the clip. If I change the scale of the clip from C minor to something like G Lydian, now the randomly generated notes will be locked to the new scale. If I disengage the use current scale option on the random, we'll now be back to just generating random notes. In order for scale awareness on things like MIDI effects to function correctly, the currently playing clip on a MIDI track needs to have a scale selected and the scale mode enabled. We can achieve this in one of two different ways. The first way is to simply select the clip and go to the clip view, come down to the scale section and make sure the use current scale option is enabled by clicking on this button right here, and then select the scale that we want to use, say E. Minor. It's also possible to enable or disable the scale mode or set the scale for a currently selected clip in the scale chooser in the control bar. All we need to do is simply select the clip like we have here, come up to the scale chooser in our control bar, and from here we also get control over enabling or disabling the scale mode for that clip and changing the scale for the selected clip as well to something like F Phrygian. And we can see this change reflected in the scale in the clip view. Now it's worth noting that of course this scale option is only available on MIDI clips, however it's not available on MIDI clips that are on MIDI tracks that contain a drum rack device. Which means that if you're using a drum rack device and maybe you're linking it to some kind of instrument like a wavetable or drift, you're not going to be able to use scale aware MIDI effects on that MIDI track. And as a small aside, if you're using Live 12's new tuning feature, which is a feature that allows you to work in different tuning systems other than 12 tone equal temperament, this will disable the scale awareness feature entirely across your whole live set. So when a clip has scale awareness enabled, there are a few options that become available to us. Firstly, we get the ability to highlight the notes of the selected scale within the currently selected clip using the highlight scale option in the top bar here, or by using the K key on our keyboard. We can also fold the notes of the clip to the currently selected scale using the scale button next to the fold button, or by using the G key on our keyboard. It's also possible to quantize any of the notes in our MIDI clip that fall outside of the currently selected scale to inside of the currently selected scale. For example, we can move the notes in this MIDI clip here off these highlighted notes, and then I can select all of these different notes, and when I click the fit to scale button, all of these notes that fall outside of the highlighted notes that fall within our scale will be quantized or snapped to the nearest note within the scale. It's worth noting that if a note outside of the scale falls exactly halfway between two notes that are in that scale, for example, a semitone either side, then it will get snapped to the nearest note below that note. Now, it's worth remembering that scales are set on a clip by clip basis, meaning that we can actually have different clips with different scales or even scale awareness turned on or off, not just within different tracks in our session, but also within different clips on the same track in our session. For example, this first clip here is set to F Phrygian. So let's just rename this to F Phrygian. Let's duplicate this clip with Command and D, and then let's change the scale of this clip here using our scale chooser to something like D minor. And let's rename this clip to D minor. And then let's duplicate this clip and disengage the scale mode entirely by turning off this scale mode in the chooser. And let's just rename this to off. And now we have three of the same clip, all with different scale settings. And you'll see that when a clip is selected, the scale chooser in the control bar will change to showcase the scale of the currently selected clip. Now at this point, it's worth noting that the scale chooser is not a global scale control. And instead, as we've seen, it reflects the scale of the currently selected clip. And we can think about it more like a default scale control. For example, if I create a new MIDI clip just by double clicking here on this clip slot, the new MIDI clip will adopt the scale currently set by the scale chooser in our control bar. 
As we can see here, the scale of this clip has been set to F Phrygian. If I select the D minor clip, this will change our scale chooser to D minor, and now if I create a new MIDI clip, our new MIDI clip will have the scale of D minor set, and of course the scale mode enabled as well. We can also change the scale settings on the scale chooser without any clips currently selected, and this will allow us to create a new clip with those scale settings without changing the scales of any selected clips. For example, I could go to this second MIDI track with no clip slots, change the scale settings here in our scale chooser to F Dorian, double click, and that will create a new clip with the scale F Dorian and scale mode enabled. If we select multiple clips at once, the scale chooser will show us whether or not the clips that we've selected have different scales and or even the scale mode enabled or disabled. For example, here if I select these first two clips in track one with the F Phrygian and F minor by holding down the shift key, we can see that we have an asterisk for the root note and an asterisk for the scale type, but we can see that both of the clips have scale mode enabled. If I were to select this off clip and the D minor clip, we can see that these clips are both set to D minor, but they have a mixture of enabled and disabled scale modes. If we have the clip view open, we can also see this same information down in the scale area in our clip view. For example, let's select all three of these clips, come down to our scale area, and we can see a mixture of scale mode on or off and asterisks in both the root note and the scale type. With multiple clips selected, we can of course change the scale settings for those multiple clips at the same time by using either the scale chooser in our control bar or by using the scale setting in the clip view. Let's go up to the scale setting in the control bar, enable scale mode, change them all to C minor, and now we can see that all these clips are set to C minor. It's also worth noting that this works for when you have multiple clips highlighted across multiple tracks in your session, including if you have audio clips selected, which makes it really easy to just select the entirety of say your arrangement and then change the scale for every single clip in your session. By the way, if you're interested in upping your music production game, I actually offer one-on-one -on -one music mentorship on a monthly basis, as well as a variety of other educational tools such as online courses, all of which you can find through the links in the description. So now that we understand how to set and enable or disable Scale awareness on clips within our sessions, how do we actually use scale awareness? Well, when scale awareness is enabled for a playing clip on a MIDI track, any device on that MIDI track that has that tiny little scale symbol can be used to work with the scale of that currently playing clip to adjust how it reacts to incoming MIDI or how it transforms MIDI based on its function. The simplest example of this is with the pitch MIDI effect. Let's go ahead here and delete these clips in our first MIDI track and create a new MIDI clip by double clicking in the first clip slot. And and on this MIDI clip, let's go ahead and again, just create a consistent pattern of eighth notes playing on the note C3. Let's open up our device view with command option and four, and let's go ahead and delete this random MIDI effect. Now let's go to our MIDI effects in our browser, navigate to the pitch MIDI effect and place this in between our two MIDI monitors. Now, by default, our pitch MIDI effect allows us to transpose an incoming MIDI note either up or down in semitones, which is the shortest distance available between two different notes in a 12-tone equal temperament tuning system, which is basically what most Western music uses. For example, let's play this clip. Let's change this pitch setting here to plus two semitones. And now each of these C notes will be playing a D note, which is two semitones higher than C. However, we can enable the use current scale option for this pitch MIDI effect by clicking on the little scale button on the top of the device. Now our pitch control will change from semitones or ST to scale degrees, SD. And this allows us to transpose incoming MIDI notes in terms of scale degrees instead of semitones, scale degrees being the closest distance between two adjacent notes within a scale rather than the entire tuning system. For example, let's go ahead and set our scale here to C major. As we can see in the clip, C major has the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then of course C again. One scale degree higher from C would be D, one scale degree higher from D would be E, one scale degree up again would be E to F, F to G, G to A, A to B, and B to C, and so on and so forth. So now this pitch MIDI effect allows us to transpose the incoming notes, making sure that they're always locked to the scale of the currently playing clip. In other words, each of these new notes will be in key. So as I play the clip and adjust this transposition control, have a listen to what happens. We can see that each of those newly generated notes or those transformed notes are actually snapped 
to the notes of the C major scale. Another simple example is what we used at the beginning of this video with the random MIDI effect, allowing us to generate random MIDI notes that are always in key. But another great example is actually with the chord MIDI effect. So let's disengage this pitch MIDI effect and grab the chord MIDI effect and put it again in between these two MIDI monitors. By default, the chord MIDI effect will allow us to add notes to an incoming MIDI note either above or below those notes. For example, I could add a note three semitones higher, five semitones higher, and 12 semitones higher. But if we engage the use current scale option, we can see that again, those semitones now transform to scale degrees. And this allows us to add MIDI notes either above or below the incoming MIDI notes in terms of scale degrees instead of in semitones. Now this is cool because I can go ahead and say add two scale degrees, four scale degrees, and seven scale degrees to create a triad. And if I change the pitch of this MIDI note with the pitch MIDI effect, all of the chords that are now generated will be in the key of the scale set by the currently playing clip. It's also worth noting that when the use current scale option is enabled for any MIDI effect that allows it, such as with the pitch, random or chord MIDI effect, it will also quantize any of the notes running through that MIDI effect to the scale of the currently playing MIDI clip, even if it's not doing any other transformations. For example, let's reset this pitch control, set it to not use the current scale, and let's reset this chord, but leave this to use the current scale. And now as I adjust the pitch control of this pitch MIDI effect, even though this pitch is in semitones, each of the transformed notes will be snapped to the scale of the currently playing clip because this chord MIDI effect is set to use the current scale. In a lot of instances, this actually makes the scale MIDI effect kind of redundant. It's worth noting that if there is not a currently playing clip on a MIDI track, but there are MIDI effects with scale awareness or the use current scale option enabled, those MIDI effects will follow the scale set in the scale chooser in the control bar. For example, let's stop this clip from playing. Let's engage my computer MIDI keyboard and arm this track. And just for good measure, let's close up the clip view with command option and three and select a slot without any clip. Let's turn off the pitch MIDI effect and change this chord MIDI effect to create some chords. And now let's send this MIDI track some MIDI with my computer MIDI keyboard. And now if we change the scale with our scale chooser to something like E minor, or maybe E mixolydian, we can see that even though there is no currently playing MIDI clip on this MIDI track, because the chord device is set to use the current scale, it's using the scale set in the scale chooser in our control bar and not the scale set by any clip. Of course, this means that if you go clicking around on different clips in your session that have different scale settings, this will change the scale set in the scale chooser and therefore any scale awareness set on MIDI tracks that don't currently have clips playing. Scale awareness also works in Live 12's new MIDI tools, which are available in the standard and suite editions of Ableton Live 12. And by using scale awareness with these tools, they allow you to generate or transform any MIDI notes, making sure that they all remain in key with the currently selected scale for that clip. Now, going over this in detail is a little bit outside of the scope of this video, but let's just showcase it really quickly with the seed MIDI tool. So let's go ahead, create a new MIDI clip on this drift track, come over to our generators, select the seed MIDI tool, and now let's generate a seed. And we can see that all of the generated notes here are snapped to the currently set scale of the clip, which is E mixolydian. If I change the scale, all of the notes will be snapped to the newly selected scale. And if I turn off scale awareness entirely, now the notes are not snapped to any scale and they're just generated completely randomly across all of the available notes within the range. Now it's worth noting that the use current scale option on these different MIDI effects is actually able to be both automated and macro mapped so that you can control it at different points throughout your session or track. For example, here I've pulled in this MIDI clip into the first two bars of this arrangement, which is just playing a single MIDI note. And here I've got the random MIDI effect again in between these two different MIDI monitors. Let's increase the chance. And here I can actually right click on the use current scale option, click on show automation in new lane or show automation. And now I can turn on the use current scale option just for the second two bars. So that in this first bar, the random device just generates notes randomly. But in this second bar, 
the randomly generated notes are locked to the scale of the currently playing clip, which is C major. I could also group multiple MIDI effects, say this chord and this pitch MIDI effect, to a MIDI effect rack by selecting them both and pressing Command or Control and G. Let's turn them both on and I can actually right click on this Use Current Scale option and map this to macro one of our MIDI effect rack. I can do this for both the pitch and the chord. And now with this macro control, I can switch between these two MIDI effects, either not using the scale of the currently playing clip or using the scale of the currently playing clip. And this actually opens up some really, really cool opportunities in terms of making your own scale aware MIDI racks that use this feature. Lastly, because scale awareness is set on a clip by clip basis, it's of course possible to have different clips with different scales in your session, but it's also possible to utilize dummy clips that have scale awareness enabled for use in your tracks, which can open up some really cool opportunities and possibilities. For example, here I've gone ahead and created a MIDI clip on this second MIDI track, which is just playing a sequence of notes every single beat. And then I've gone ahead and set this MIDI track to send its MIDI to that first drift track. And then this drift track to monitor the input with the monitor option. And what this means is that this drift track is consistently receiving the MIDI from this second MIDI track and then playing back that MIDI. On this drift track, I then have a chord MIDI effect with some stuff going on. And this chord MIDI effect is scale aware. Let's go ahead and on this drift track, I can create a few different MIDI clips with different scales. For example, this first one can be C major. This second one could be E major. And this third one could be say A major. And now I can play this clip on this second MIDI track, send it to this drift track, and then change the scale used by this chord MIDI effect by triggering these different clips here, even though we don't hear the MIDI from these different clips. And this can open up some really cool possibilities, especially for live performance if you're using dummy clips in this way. And there you have it, there is pretty much everything you need to know about scale awareness and how it works in Ableton Live 12. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something. If you did, make sure to leave a like down below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.